House of the Dragon Season 2 premiere was a pretty slow yet strong start with all sides preparing for a long-awaited conflict and Rhaenyra's side dealing its first devastating blow. And yet the blow wasn't as hard as I expected it to be. And I feel like it could have been much more. A House of the Dragon's own red wedding, a shocking start for the show that would make it rival Game of Thrones level of drama. So let's explore on it. First signs that the blood and cheese scene will have some changes made to it appeared when the official poster for the Green's lineage didn't have Mailer, the second son of Aegon and Helena. As the showrunner Ryan Condal explained, this change was made due to condensing 30 years in the book into 20 years in the show. But for all it's worth, I don't really feel like it's a good explanation. The show has made Alicent Hightower significantly younger to be Rhaenyra's childhood companion, and yet Alicent's children are all present within the show's timeline. We didn't see Daeron yet, but he clearly is in the show canon as he appears on the official house tree, as well as his emblem is shown in season 1 intro. Helena and Aegon having one more son is essential for the blood and cheese scene adaptation, as without it the scene loses most of its horror. Let's look at the original scene from Fire and Blood. First of all, Blood and Cheese infiltrate the Red Keep, get into Alicent's quarters and strangle her handmaiden. They make Alicent wait for when Helena brings her children for their evening time together and show the horror of Dowager Queen waiting for the inevitable, unable to stop what is about to happen. So when Helena finally enters Alicent's chambers, Blood and Cheese kill her guards and force Helena to make an impossible choice, which one of her sons is going to die. Helena named her youngest Mailer. Perhaps she thought the boy was too young to understand, or perhaps it was because the older boy, Jaehaerys, was King Aegon's firstborn son and heir, next in line to the Iron Throne. You hear that, little boy, Cheese whispered to Mailer. Your mama wants you dead. Then he gave Blood a grin, and the hulking swordsman slew Prince Jaehaerys, striking off the boy's head with a single blow. Not only does this scene have a much more chilling atmosphere, but it also establishes long-lasting consequences of trauma for Alicent, Helena, and Maelor. It also doesn't come up as confusingly lucky as the fact that two rat catchers don't encounter any guards and just stumble upon Queen Helena's quarters by accident, and Blood not actually knowing who she is, even though he is still a gold cloak in the show. This is just so underwhelming to watch. And look, Helena is a different character as opposed to the original book version. She is much more enigmatic and distant, which is a change that can be explored later as we see the consequences of this attack. But reducing the choice between her sons to her offering the assailants her necklace comes up as a shock for me. And then both blood and cheese let her go, knowing that she can call for guards or scream or do whatever, and they don't know the way out of this level, as they barely found the way inside. It comes off as sloppy and just stupid. I understand that the original scene would probably be too much for HBO to adapt. The Red Wedding at least was about adults dying in a treacherous plot and not the kids being beheaded. But it could all happen off the screen, just as it happened in the show's version of the scene. And even here, with this scene, they've managed to make it Green's fault, with Sir Criston sleeping with Alicent, instead of staying on his card in the most dangerous of times for the royal family. I am no fan of Green's in this story, and I think that HBO did a great job at compensating for the pro-Hightower bias of the maester writing Fire and Blood. But this is starting to get a bit too much. If by letting Larry Strong fab to her feet, she at least furthered her goals for making her son king, she only makes herself a hypocrite and even less likable as a character by sleeping with Cole. This change is going to affect Aegon's own succession as well, as now he doesn't have a son, 
and will have to either make his daughter his heir, effectively doing the same as Viserys, or have Aemond first in line to inherit the throne, which will not be a great idea as this guy wants the throne a bit too much. House of the Dragon wants to set up Aegon's side to reflect Viserys' own succession crisis, with only a female child and a chaotic power-hungry brother as his options. And though currently I think it's a downgrade from the original, we'll see what comes off of it in the next episodes. Thank you for watching, and if you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll probably make more content about House of the Dragon, as well as various other studies of games and TV series. See you in the next video. Until then.